What's up everybody? I do want to share some items that are new to my collection, some deliveries that I just got in. So um, I did mention previously that I was going to get Prince Robot the Fourth from Saga. So you know here he is. This is the common one. And I am getting the um, exclusive version of him as well. So you know now that I have this figure I do have all these figures here on the back including the um, Chase variant of the Will and a couple of the variants of Lion Cat. I just got to get the bloody Lion Cat figure which I will get. I'm on free comic book day, which is actually next weekend. Um, that came up pretty fast. So yeah, we're we're just about you know at the time of this recording, a week away from free comic book day. And I really do hope you all get out and um you know support your local comic book shops on that day. Not just to go get the free comics, but also to buy a little something while you're there. You know, really support those shops because um they they deserve that support. You know, they do some great things. Um, you know, not just providing comics, but also providing collectibles as well. Now to round out my hot cash order, I basically was a few dollars off from the thirty dollars, you know, in order to get fifteen dollars knocked off of that. So I figured I would order a Dorbs along with that. And um, I haven't been collecting a whole lot of Dorbs lately, but overall I, I still like Dorbs. And um, I figured I would go for the Poison Ivy one, the Bombshell Poison Ivy, because I do like the look of it. And then also it has a chance of a uh, glow in the dark chase variant. So let me make sure I'm opening this up correctly here so here we had the poison ivy bombshell dwarves in <laughs> and we actually got the glow in the dark chase variant which is pretty awesome so yeah man, man that's cool and this is limited to 5,000 pieces I'm actually not sure if that includes the chase or not but um yeah very cool so I will have to make sure I check out the glow on this and um yeah, that is pretty awesome. I don't, I don't know if I'll worry about any of the rest of these except for maybe the Harley Quinn one, which I actually can't remember whether I have that one or not. But if, I, if it's not in my collection, I may try to get that one as well. Honestly, I have so much Harley Quinn stuff I can't remember sometimes. But yeah, that is very cool to get the glow-in-the-dark chase there of Poison Ivy. Very cool. So this is probably the... Um, I'm trying to remember now how many chases I've gotten from Hot Topic. It's definitely not the first. It's the second or the third. I know I got the heifer chase from them. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and move on and focus on Marvel now, which is really the main focus of this video, especially Avengers Infinity War. But before I get directly into Avengers Infinity War, I was able to order a Walgreens, yet another Walgreens exclusive, because I've been ordering a couple of those recently. But um, yeah, I was able to order here the six-arm Spider-Man. And this figure, like when I ordered it, it was almost like an impulse buy. I was like, I might as well get it while it's actually available. And at the time of this recording, I don't think it's available on the website. But I have a feeling that it probably will get a restock. So yeah, just keep checking for that. But um, yeah, it was almost like an impulse buy. And I was like, I don't know if I should have ordered that or not. But now looking at it up close, this is a pretty cool figure. So yeah, I'm actually glad that I have this in my collection now. Yeah, here's the figure out of box in... You know, the colors and everything, it's pretty standard Spider-Man, but for Funko, Funko has really cleaned up their, the look of their Spider-Man figures a lot. Because they, they used to try to do the, um, the actual black lines with the webbing, and that just did not turn out well. So once they stopped doing that, the figure started to look a lot more clean, and yeah, this one looks very clean. And, you know, it's amazing how the arm sculpts, they actually work on the body, you know, it doesn't look awkward or anything. I mean, well... It's, kind of, it's meant to look awkward in a way because he has six arms, but as far as how they designed it, though, and sculpted it, it actually really does work. And I love that the hands are in all these, you know, these different poses, except for the hands down here, of course, are in the whip, you know, pose for his webbing. So, yeah, that is a very cool figure. And like I said, I'm really glad I was able to catch this while it was online. And again, you all don't give up on it. If you're interested in this figure, do make sure that you keep checking their website to see if it becomes available again. The next figure here is more directly related to Infinity War and um, you know I am going to get into some spoiler talk about the movie in this video not quite yet though um, well in a way yes in a way no there is a particular figure that I did not mint well I didn't show an image of it in um, one of my last unboxing videos because I thought it might be a spoiler now that I have seen the movie Infinity War, I will tell you that this is not a spoiler. I, okay, trust me on that. This is really not a spoiler. Um, it does give away one little story detail, but it's, it's nothing major at all. But if you're super sensitive 
about anything that you consider to be a spoiler, then just don't watch the rest of this video. You can come back to it after you have checked out the Infinity War movie. But trust me, I'm saying this again. This is a figure that you're, you're going to see it more than likely anyway. And also, it really does not spoil anything from the movie. That's my opinion. But again, if you're super sensitive about spoilers, go ahead and tune out. Don't give me any complaints in the comment section about seeing something that you didn't want to see because I already gave you fair warning. But yeah, let me go ahead and get to this figure here. And um, like I said, you're going to see this figure regardless because I know when I went to GameStop to pick it up, they actually had three of them actually sitting out on display. But um, yeah, here we have the Hulk busting out of the Hulkbuster figure which I'm actually amazed I was already, you know, able to go ahead and get this. But it was funny, though, right before I went to go see Infinity War, or no, actually, it was right after I saw Infinity War, I swung by Toys R Us just to get a feel for what was going on there. And um, at my Toys R Us, the pops are up to 20% uh, off, and they did have some other collectibles that were 20 to 30% off, so the sales have improved a little bit. But, um... Yeah, I got a call from GameStop saying that they lifted the street date on this figure and they decided to go ahead and put it out. And I think the reason that they did this is because this figure, it may have been based off of an earlier script of the movie or, you know, a possibility for the movie. And maybe they changed their mind about it because they want to go somewhere specific with Bruce Banner and the Hulk. But um, and I'll get into that some more, you know, later on. But, uh, you know, when I really get deep into spoilers. But, yeah, like I said this really does not spoil anything from the movie this is not really a scene from the movie but it is a very cool looking figure here you get a better view of it there on the side of course him busting up out of the armor the Hulkbuster armor he's pictured it on the back and then we have all the commons going on there as well so yeah this one even though um the box is taped but um, I'm not going to worry about that because this is a keeper. Like, you know, I'm enough of a Marvel fan. I could say that this is definitely a keeper for me. So I actually am going to unbox this and we'll take a closer look at it. I actually had chosen um, not to get the uh, Hulkbuster, you know, the one that was designed for Infinity War. Because I just, I, I like the original a lot more that Funko did. It's just a better looking figure to me. And I'm actually really glad now that I didn't get that new Hulkbuster, excuse me, new Hulkbuster because... Now this one is kind of two in one because it does have Hulk in there and then also you know I mean the Hulkbuster is here even though it's busted up and everything but yeah so I really do like the design of this this looks so cool I like how with the Hulk figure I mean obviously he looks you know very menacing the way that the Hulk should nice hair sculpt going on and you still see bits of the metal kind of wrapped around him as he's working his way up out of the Hulkbuster armor. And, uh, you know, you see the the Hulkbuster um, head skull back there as well. And you can see inside of it just a little bit. Not really super detailed in there, but just enough, you know. So this is a very cool figure. It's almost like a, um, I mean, it's almost like a movie moment. But like I said, it's not actually a moment within the movie, you know. So, and, and also, if you're wondering about the arms, you got to remember when, um, Whenever somebody's inside the Hulkbuster armor, of course, usually it's Tony Stark. It's not as if his arms are actually stretched out into the mechanical arms. It's all of his body there in the center. And then he's controlling the rest of the Hulkbuster armor from, you know, that centerpiece there. So the way that they have the Hulk busting out of here, they actually really did put some thought into it. You know, it really is true to the way that the Hulkbuster is designed. I like here also, you can kind of see the arc reactor there, you know, breaking out to the side. So this is a very cool figure and when I first saw it yeah I was a little worried about it being a spoiler for the movie but like I said it's it's actually not don't even stress that it really is not a spoiler okay so now if you if you stuck with me but you have not seen the Infinity War movie I really am about to get into some deep spoilers and sharing my thoughts about the movie so like I said, you know, before, if you've already seen the movie, feel free to stick with me. If you have not seen the movie, please come back to this video later on and hear my thoughts about it. And while I talk about the movie and my thoughts on it, I actually am going to go ahead and get the items out of the latest Collector Core box, the Avengers Infinity War box, which I know a lot of people have seen this as well. Um, Funko did their unboxing video and then I know some other YouTubers have been sharing this as well so yeah this may not be a big deal to some people but I'm still giving that fair warning there and um, like I said while I'm pulling these items out I am going to go ahead and get into my thoughts about the movie 
I'm going to go ahead and get the negatives out of the way first. And of course, these are my personal opinions of what I feel was um, not so strong about the movie. And I'm not trying to convince anybody to feel the way that I feel, you know, with this kind of brief review and spoiler talk. This is just about me sharing my personal opinion. So if you feel differently, you know, that's absolutely fine. But um, yeah, as far as the negatives are concerned, I would say um, Peter Dinklage's character the one that helped to forge the new weapon, the Stormbreaker. I didn't find his character very interesting at all. I really didn't like the way the character was handled, and that's not a shot at the actor. I mean, he worked with what he was given, which was really not a lot to work with. But I thought just visually the character didn't work. Um, I, I know what they were going for. I just, yeah, it didn't quite work for me. Uh, by the way, with these keycaps, of course, there are other um, characters you can get. I'm very happy that I got Thanos and um, Spider-Man here, so definitely happy with that. And then... um. Also, really that whole segment that they kept going back to with um, Thor working to uh, get his new weapon made wasn't especially interesting. It felt like just a way to get certain characters out of the way, you know, um, and to keep the plot moving pretty much. So, yeah, I, I wasn't really too happy with that whole situation. And, um, you know, Groot <laughs> didn't have much to do. I mean, he did end up playing a role in helping to forge that weapon. But for the most part, it was just him you know, being a typical teenager with his, his face stuck on a video game most of the time there. So, yeah, that was a bit of a letdown. He did get in uh, get in on the action a little bit towards the end, but overall, yeah, he was definitely underutilized. And, um, oh, by the way, this, uh, this bandana is it's, uh, more transparent than I thought it would be, but you can still see it pretty solidly there that this is Iron Man there on the bandana. But yeah, and same goes for Rocket. Rocket did have some good lines here and there, but I felt like he was a bit underutilized as well. But I mean, that's going to happen when you have so many characters in a movie. There were actually a lot of characters that were there basically just to serve the action. And again, you know, that's somewhat understandable. I know one of the big downsides for a lot of people is going to be the fact that there was no Hawkeye at all in the movie. But I will say this give Marvel credit for not lying to us they didn't put him in the promotion because it would have been dishonest because again he's not in the movie so yeah I actually I'm glad that they were at least honest about that and um, I'll talk some more about what what you know I think what happened with that particular character you know as the next movie comes along but um and by the way this here is a heat change mug if you haven't seen this yet I think it's pretty cool that you know it has the um, infinity gauntlet and the gems or stones actually light up you know as it gets hot so that's pretty cool and it's my first time actually having one of these but um yeah another negative for me is I like the humor in the movie but sometimes it felt like they were taking breaks for comedy it wasn't really I don't feel like the humor was integrated enough into the scenes it like even when when they had that big uh, battle at the end of Wakanda I mean, characters literally just stopped to stand still to kind of deliver these quippy lines to each other. And some of them fell really flat, especially the interaction between Rocket and um, Winter Soldier. It just, it wasn't funny to me, you know. Um, so some of the comedy worked, some of it didn't. And I feel like they need to blend the comedy in a lot more. That's why Deadpool is probably still my favorite comic book movie, movie of all time. Because it managed to be dark and have a lot of action and yet really you know keep the comedy rolling along with everything else that was happening so yeah I really did appreciate that um, here's the actual mug itself by the way and it actually I didn't realize this before it has an infinity gauntlet on both sides so that is pretty cool and um, you know some people that get a lot of boxes they might be sick of mugs because a lot of mugs come in boxes but it's been a while since I've received one and I really do like this okay so and uh, as far as another negative, I definitely have to address this. I felt like characters did some things that were nonsensical. Um, the most obvious one was when, and I, I understand that he was upset, you know, that um, Star-Lord finding out that Gamora had been sacrificed. Of course he was upset. But for him to interfere with them getting the gauntlet off of Thanos was so stupid. And that's the first time I ever felt like I didn't like Star-Lord. And I hated feeling that way of not liking him. But it was because it was just such a dumb moment. And I could not imagine the character really doing that. It felt just out of place for him. Um, same thing kind of goes for Thor. When um, 
when Thor had the opportunity to use his new weapon, which by the way, his new weapon was so awesome. Like the way he entered into the battle at the end was pretty amazing. And by the way, um, I know some people are not happy with this item. They really wanted to get more characters and I can understand that. I think it looks pretty cool though. I, I know I know there's a lot of Thanos figures out there right now, but I actually do like this overall. And do keep in mind that there are some more Avengers Infinity War pops on the way. You know, so it's not like they're done, you know, with the focus on the movie. Although I gotta say, because the design of the characters, uh, for the most part, have not changed a whole lot. I mean, Captain America looks different, um, Black Widow looks different, but most of the characters, they look pretty much the same. So, you know, people that really want to see uh, more pops, uh, you're probably going to end up with a lot of characters that look pretty much the same, but with just different poses. Although I will say this, one pop I want them to make is actually Tony Stark and his civilian clothing with... Um, the, you know, the new thing on his chest that basically holds the uh, nanotechnology for his suit. Yeah, I would like that. Just like a civilian version of um, Tony Stark, I think that would be cool. You know, but, um, and I actually am going to open up this uh, pop ride while I continue to speak here. But yeah, uh, also another negative, like I was about to say, Thor had the opportunity to kill Thanos. Even Thanos knows that Thor had the opportunity to kill him. But he, instead of doing that, instead of aiming for the head like he should have, he decided to aim for Thanos' chest with that new weapon because he wanted to get off that little quippy line to him or whatever, or that revenge line, and it allowed Thanos to do what he did, which was to snap those fingers, you know, so, uh, yeah, uh, really, yeah, Star-Lord and Thanos very much frustrated me in the movie. It's almost like they ignored all of the growth that these characters have gone through in the previous movies because they both have been very arrogant in the past, but... Yeah, that's arrogant to the point where you let the villain win. Yeah, that's that was uncalled for. Um, I know some people may say that that's just necessary to move the plot forward, and and that you know it could be true, but it's still frustrating nonetheless. Yeah, so here we have Thanos in this ride, and you know I know one reason some people may not like this ride either is because the ship that it represents is such a huge ship. So to see Thanos just sitting there right on top of it is definitely awkward, but these are never to scale anyway, you know, so like I said, I'm still fine with this. I think it looks pretty cool, but um, let me move away from the negatives. I'm, I'm going to go to things that I'm kind of lukewarm on, so these aren't complete negatives. As far as the Black Order is concerned, I really did like those characters, but, in, but they were there for what I thought they were going to be there for, which was pretty much just for action. Oh, by the way, Cole Obsidian. Uh, I liked his design before, and I still like the character in the movie. I almost wish that he had that giant axe with him for the figure. Who knows? Maybe they'll do a variant. I would be down with that. You know, slim chances, but we'll see. But yeah, the Black Order, I just felt like they were they were only there for the action. We really didn't get to learn anything about them. Would have been nice to give them just a little more background. You know, um, not just that they're there to serve Thanos, you know, but yeah, they could have given them just a little bit of a background. And then the way that... um. Each member was killed off would seem very quick, you know, too. But, uh, yeah, overall, they were still cool. I mean, they were, we figured they were going to be henchmen, and that's what they were. Uh, Captain America, to me, in this movie, I felt like Captain America, there was not enough emotion there. Um, he was there kind of to serve the plot, pretty much. It, it's like the, the least that I've seen out of Captain America, you know, emotion-wise and just being invested in everything. I just, I feel like there could have been more there. Like, he really needed more dialogue or something. Something just felt missing with his role this time. Let me go ahead and finally get into the positives because there are a lot of positives with this movie. I like Tony Stark in this movie. I gotta say that, um, you know, he's the main one where you felt like this buildup of all this time because it really did start with him. You know, he had the first solo movie and everything and then he was so, um, traumatized by the events in New York you know he had PTSD and everything you really felt that weight of what Thanos has been doing and his plan like, like falling onto his shoulders so I thought that was excellent I thought it was interesting to him you know th that he's planning to get married and he talks about the possibility of kids and all of that so um I'm gonna talk about some things I expect from the future of this franchise and I'll get back to that relating to him but yeah I like Tony Stark in this movie and his armor is the best armor he's ever had I mean there's no question about that all the things that that armor can do it's worth going back for me it's going back worth going back to watch the movie again just for the action and especially to see all the cool things that his suit was doing especially when he was fighting Thanos and that that armor is just amazing it did look a little maybe too CGI at sometimes but overall that 
that armor. Yeah, that was very cool. Um, also, I really did like Doctor Strange in this movie. And I think Doctor Strange, what he said towards the end is going to be pivotal moving forward into the next movie because he looked at all those possible futures and he pretty much knew that things had to go down the way that they did. But I think he also realizes that this will lead to an eventual victory. I don't know exactly how that's going to happen. It may have something to do with... Um, well, wherever you know the um the gauntlet ended up, and well, more more precisely, where exactly the Infinity Stones ended up, you know, um, yeah, I think Doctor Strange knew that in the long run, even though this is really messed up right now, things will work out. And I really liked his powers as well. The way he used his powers within the movie was pretty cool. I like Bruce Banner coming back um to catch up with everything because of course he's been out of the loop for a while. So, you know, like when he said, wait, wait, there's an Ant-Man and a Spider-Man. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, it was just cool to see him catch up. And like I said, I really think that they're building towards something bigger between him and the Hulk. And that might be why something was changed there. Because I really do feel like this figure here was probably based off of an early script. I don't think they just came up with this out of nowhere. You know, so, um, yeah, I really do feel like this may have been based off an of early script. And, you know, we'll see what happens now with the way things are going to go. I think there's a possibility that either he and Hulk are going to decide to be more on the same page and you know because Hulk does kind of have his own personality but they may be more on the same page to where we end up with an intelligent Hulk or who knows maybe they could possibly split for a while as well that has happened in the comics where you had Bruce Banner and then you had Hulk and they were actually two separate bodies you know so you know we'll see what happens there but Hulk um Hulk catching a beat down at the beginning from Thanos. Did not expect to see that. I knew Thanos would um, beat him, you know, at some point. I mean, they made that pretty obvious in the trailer. But to see Hulk really getting whooped up, whooped up on, that was amazing. That really was amazing. And it really established Thanos as such a powerful villain. And to me, Thanos was definitely the standout in this movie. It, really, it very much was his movie. They even made that clear at the end when they said Thanos will return. I mean, yeah, this was really his movie, his time to shine and to do what he wanted to do. And um I think he is a great villain. You know, I would really put them up there put him up there as one of the best that we've seen in a comic book movie. And um you know his goal, even though it is crazy, he actually believed in it. And you know there's some truth to it. I mean um you know our planet deals with overpopulation. You would imagine if there were other planets out there with life on them, they might have that same issue. So destroying you know half the population it does make it where people can thrive more there's more available for people and maybe there's less of you know class systems and everything so yeah it's, it's twisted logic but it kind of makes sense in a way so I, again I do understand why Thanos did what he did and by the way his motivations in this movie were a lot more sensible to me than in the comics whereas he was courting death in the comics and we know they had that line at the end of the Avengers the first Avengers movie about courting death but um yeah, he actually had a clear motivation and um, he believed in what, you know, he said. He actually did love Gamora, even though he's a horrible father, but he still did love her. And I think that was the most powerful scene, actually, probably um, when he um, was crying and, you know, realizing that he's about to have to sacrifice Gamora. That was pretty powerful. Um, Peter Parker, um, when he was uh, dying as well. Um, that was pretty powerful too, especially with him being the youngest Avenger and just be officially becoming an Avenger and then saying I'm not ready to go. That was yeah, that's pretty powerful. I, I think I actually heard somebody tearing up in the theater. No, it wasn't me, but I think I actually heard somebody um, more than one person actually tearing up in the theater at that point, especially when everybody started to fade away, um, which, you know, Bravo, definitely Bravo to Marvel for going there. And I got to say this, I know, I know some people won't believe me, but as this movie was getting closer, especially in the past like two to three weeks, I've been thinking more and more about it. And I was like, you know what, Thanos, he's going to do it. He's going to snap his fingers. I had no idea what would happen after that, but I had a strong feeling that he was actually going to win. And um, I knew he was going to win in some capacity regardless because the Avengers are not all together, you know, because, um, you know, this big split between Iron Man and Cap. So... Yeah, I had a feeling he was going to win, but not to the level that he did, you know, to, to kill off so many of the heroes. But if you know comics, you know that, um, you know, this is going to get worked out in some way, at least to some extent. Um, and another prediction I had 
was that the Red Skull would make an appearance. I did not expect him to appear the way that he did, but I did have a feeling that the Red Skull would appear in some fashion within this movie. And I actually almost feel sad for him, the way that he got stuck, you know, watching over the Soul Stone. Kind of makes you wonder now what will happen with, you know, him, if he's going to appear again in any fashion, or if he's still just stuck in that plane. I mean, who really knows? And when I say plane, I mean, like, the, the, the world that he's within, you know, so, uh, but yeah, I did expect to see him, so I was right about a couple things, but then I was definitely wrong about some things. Like a lot of people, I thought either Captain America or Iron Man would die. That did not happen. And as a matter of fact, you all that watched the movie, and I hope you all watched the movie if you're still listening to this point, you know, I think you realize that the original Avengers team, all those members are still alive. And then, of course, there are a few others that are alive as well, including um, uh, Nebula, and I think Rocket Raccoon may have survived as well, if I'm remembering correctly, but... Yeah, um, there are still a few others alive, but it's mainly that original Avengers team. So now they really have to live up to that name and they have to avenge what Thanos did. You know, what Thanos was um, able to accomplish. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting in the next movie. And I do think that Hawkeye is going to play a pivotal role. Um, I think that's why they kept him out of this movie because he's kind of in hiding. And I think he's going to come back as Ronan. If you know the comics, you know about Ronan or if you've been paying attention to leaked information, you know about Ronan. Um, yeah, I think he's going to come back with that different persona because he's still trying to protect his family, but he's going to come back to help out. Um, I also think that there will be some legitimate deaths. Um, you know, people that faded away at the end, I think most of them will come back and they will survive. Like, uh, I think Scarlet Witch will come back. Um, obviously, you know, Spider-Man is coming back. We know Black Panther is coming back. That That's very obvious. Um, but yeah, I think most of them will come back and live on. Vision, I don't know if Vision is actually going to come back. I mean, he died twice in this movie, so to resurrect him again, I don't know if it's going to happen. I feel like Gamora's got to come back, even though she didn't die as a result of the Infinity Gauntlet. I cannot imagine... You know, the Guardians of the Galaxy moving on into Volume 3 without her. So, I feel like she's got to come back in some way, even if it comes down to Thanos, maybe sacrificing himself in some way to bring her back. Something's got to happen there. We need Gamora, you know. Um, But I, I still feel like some of the ones that did survive, maybe they will end up sacrificing themselves. Who knows? I think people won't like me for saying this, but I do feel like Captain America should maybe die. I think um, it's about that time for him to sacrifice himself in some way and maybe the Captain America man will get passed along to um you know the Bucky Mo Bucky would make most sense to me not Falcon I think you know the way the MCU has been I think it would make mo the most sense for Bucky to actually end up as the new Captain America but I just feel like it would make more sense for him to die than Iron Man because Iron Man avoided death in this movie he's avoided death a couple of times so him dying wouldn't have as much impact now. I, I really feel though, like after Thanos is defeated, inevitably, you know, defeated, I feel like Iron Man should basically retire. You know, he's already talking about getting married. He's already talking about, you know, he want, wants to have kids and he's been through enough. So I feel like after Thanos is defeated, then Iron Man should basically step down. And who knows, maybe Riri Williams could come into it as Ironheart, you know, um, or maybe they could just not have an Iron Man for a while. You know, we'll see what happens there. But that's the way I think that it might go in the future. I definitely want to hear from you all. What do you expect to see with the fourth Avengers movie? Um, it's going to be interesting, though. Now, like I said, a lot of people, especially people that don't know the comics well, were really um, shocked by the ending. I was kind of surprised, too. I, I, didn't, I wasn't really 100% sure if they were going to go there with that many deaths of uh, major characters. But it, it does get me even more excited to see what exactly is going to happen in that next movie. So, yeah, um... This is a spoiler talk video, so I'm going to make sure that's clear within the thumbnail and also within the title. So feel free to say what you want to say down in the comments because I really want to hear people's thoughts about this movie. Please share whatever you want to share and also your uh, predictions for the future as well. But overall, I got to say, I really enjoyed this movie. I do feel like it's worth watching again, just, you know, even just for the visuals, all the crazy action and effects and everything. Yeah, it's, it's quite a spectacle. Oh, by the way, I... If you, I, I saw it in 2D and I was happy to see it in 2D. I, I don't think I need to see it in 3D because there were a lot of dark scenes, a lot of quick movement and stuff like that, which doesn't usually go well with 3D. So for me, 2D was perfectly fine. And if I get to see it again, I'll probably see it in 2D again. But um, yeah, that that's pretty much going to do it for my thoughts on the movie. I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts on the movie. And thank you for checking out this video. And I'll talk to you all again real soon.